Yes, good afternoon. Colleagues, uh, excellences, friends. Um, it's my pleasure to, uh, to moderate this panel. And with so many excellent speakers that we have. Oh, whoa. One speaker is missing. <laughs> so um, this is the third panel. And you already saw two panels. And the whole event is on connectivity. And we've heard, uh, heard the first panel on the political connectivity between uh, China and the European Union. Then the second was on the uh, transportation and infrastructure connectivity between 16 plus 1 format countries. And uh, now we will look. Uh, at the people-to-people -people connectivity. And in this case, uh, I guess we will need the political and physical infrastructure only if people will be cooperating. So in this case, the very basis of, of the uh, 16 plus 1 and all the common plans is actually the people-to-people -people cooperation. And so in this case, uh, our task in, during this panel is to answer several questions which have been already indicated in the program. And uh, first of all, how intensive is people-to-people -people engagement in the context of 16 plus 1? Uh, what are the most productive people-to-people -people engagement elements up to date? And uh, can the educational exchange between China and uh, Central and Eastern European countries become also a noteworthy uh, economic cooperation element? Um, my task here today is, of course, only to uh, be uh, promoter of connectivity between the speakers and, 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 and discussants. <laughs> um, so in this case, uh, my task will be to, uh, to follow, if, 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 if you follow the uh, seven minute um, time frame, and uh, also to, to look for the uh, questions from, from you, the audience which is present here, and also from the audience which is uh, watching us online, as uh, also those of you who are watching us online um, send us the questions to uh, Twitter or, via, or to email to cynthiabroca at lii.lv. And then in this case, we're going to be informed on what you want to ask and what you want to know and ask the panelists. So uh, let's turn to the panelists. And um, first of all, I would like to turn to uh, Professor Cheng Yang, uh, president of the International Business Research Institute uh, of uh, Central and Eastern European countries, Hebei University of Economics and Business in Hebei province in China. Um, you have been also uh, holding, well, you are still holding master degrees from the United Kingdom and Netherlands. You have been a visiting professor in, 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 uh, at the Bremen Applied Science University in Germany in Hoge School of Groningen in Netherlands, uh, and you have actually been uh, doing quite a lot of research and teaching in all around the world, including USA, Zambia, Ghana, Poland, Romania, also Latvia, and Hong Kong. So please, the floor is yours, and seven minutes are also yours. Thank you, Chairman. Um, good afternoon. First of all, since my topic is something about the people to people's uh, that's the communication, so I would like to introduce myself to everyone here. So my name in Chinese, that is two characters. Thanks God, we have got Confucius staff members and students. They all know Cheng Jian. What does it mean? Cheng means successful and Jian means healthy. I always tell my students and my colleagues uh, Think about that. If you are a successful and healthy man, what else do you need to get from this world? Nothing. And uh, I've got an English name for you. That is Jerry. When I'm seeing Jerry here, no one laughs. But when I'm talking about Jerry in domestic mainline China, all my students, they will laugh. Why? Because suddenly, my name, English name, reminds me, reminds their, them to think about the Walt Disney's picture. Tom and Jerry. I'm Tom. <laughs> and then I need to explain it uh, once more. Hey, think about that. That's just the short form of Jeremiah. The roots are in Germany. And you open the Bible, you could find some certain pages uh, will tell you Jeremiah used to be a sage even 2,000 years earlier than St. Peter. So, step by step, 
I'm in my topic. Today, my topic is analyzing cultural exchanges between CEC and China from the perspective of Herod Hofstad cultural dimension theory. Remember, Herod Hofstad, that's Dutch. English pronunciation, that could be Gerard Hofstad, a Dutch professor. So, mainly speaking, I will divide my today, that divide my today's presentation into three parts. The first one, that is current situation. Second one, analyze. The third one, that is conclusion or the countermeasures. Now is the first one. I must keep the principle of the time limitation, otherwise they will kick me off. So first, current situation. If you want me to, that's it, to draw a picture about the so-called 16 plus one, in my mind, because my research field, that is uh, the crossing culture organization, I would like to draw a picture in this way. A strong man with a cap, but no body, no feet. And uh, let's see, the current situations, uh, first I want to talk about the 50 years of isolation. After People's Republic of China's foundation last century in 1949, we gathered under the same flag. And then conflicts, argument, and then let's see, nations, uh, they come to a process to search for their independence. I have to say, then CEC and China and the flag of 16 plus one, we have the reunion again. And then I'm going to talk about current situation of cultural exchanges between CEC and China. First of all, poor quantity. We all know 16 plus one. But that's something, a meeting. It, it has two levels, the national level and the local leaders level. And uh, only Chongqing, Zhejiang, thanks God, the third uh, local leaders uh, that the summit uh, um, is held in my hometown, that is Tangshan city. So Tangshan, the three cities, people, they know that. And, uh, the lower level, when I'm talking about the lower level of the exchange, that's the cultural exchange, that's the um, people were there doing what? People, businessmen from 16 plus, 16 countries, uh, they, they were busy to selling their what? Wines. And their natural sports like, uh, hey, come to Moldova. We have the best uh, travel resources here. So I have to see that is a, a lower level. And we could not see the higher frequency things. Try to imagine each year we have many delegations uh, come from states, come from UK. Even one time we have got gathered more than 100 or at least 60 or 50 members. But when I was in Tangshan the summit this year, the total number is that's just around 100. So I see that it's a lower level, lower frequency, and various languages. Talking about the language, we must admire language is most important to that's the cultural carrier. We need language, but we have put ourselves in the language trap. This reminds me of thinking about one thing, that is uh, this year I pay a visit to Poland plus Romania, and quickly we established a major which is named as uh, Romania language on our campus. But that reminds me of thinking another thing. We have 15 nations here. Can we solve the problem, language barriers, in this way? I don't know. And uh, weird politics. My major is not focusing, let's see, in the political issues or field. But we have to talk about the political things. Like I have already explained, at the beginning, we gathered and the same red flag. Then we have conflicts and we argued. And now, 
for the business and economic, the so-called double win purpose. We come to gather here to get together again. And uh, next, uh, that is uh, the developing infrastructures. I still remember some colleagues uh, in the, the, the second uh, panel, they have talked about that see about the, uh, that see the, the transportation things. It's very hard for me to fly to this country, this nation. I must come to Russia first. And this is the first, uh, that's a topic. The second one, that is analysis. And it is the time for me to introduce Professor Hofstad, a Dutch professor's uh, knowledge to everyone here. And when we want to talk to somebody, you must recognize the cultural differences, like American guy or Latvia guy or Polish guy. No, that is not the right thing you need to do because we have sub, sub, sub cultures. So the best way that is uh, Professor Hofstad, six dimensions indexes. That offer us a way to measure the people from different cultures. So this is the second part. And the last part is that uh, analysis. I've got uh, some suggestion. Um, first uh, suggestion is that uh, let's deepen 16 plus one system. Let's try to find the body plus arms and feet for this giant. Secondly, let's remove the language barriers, but first we need to find the international style language. For some specialists or professors or people, pioneers like us, we need to dip, dig, let's see, deeper and deeper. But for the ordinary businessmen, what they need is just a talk in English or Spanish, whatever. Next, that is break the political cages. That is, that's the economicalized the business, uh, the political issues, and to search for the double win. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be playing a very important role to have the influence on the so-called, uh, that's the very excellent style communicating, right? The last but not, not least is that we need to have a new word here. That is uh, the word our prime minister often mentioned, that is content cultural differences. Then we are family members. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I very much enjoyed your uh, remark um, regarding the uh, people to people flights that we need. <laughs> um, before turning to the European side, on my left side, the European side, we still have a, a colleague from, uh, from, from, from China, Dr. Uh, Leo Zukui. Uh, director of the Department of uh, Central and Eastern European Studies, Director of, uh, of the China and Central and Eastern European uh, Countries Think Tanks Exchange and Cooperation Network Office. Uh, senior, you have been also a senior researcher at the Development Research Center of the uh, State Council of China, uh, research fellow at the China Foundation of International Studies, research, uh, senior researcher at the uh, Regional Security Center of uh, Chinese Academy of Social so Sciences in China, and also visiting scholar to quite a lot of uh, universities in, uh, and institutes, including the Latvian Institute of National Affairs, which we're mostly and, and, and for the most grateful for. Please, if you could share your views on the on the on the people to people connections in in in, in, in seven minutes, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, for Chairman. Uh, but if you need me to save some time, I can see. Uh, uh, in very few minutes that <laughs> I hope that uh, this today the think tank forum could become a successful story between China and Latvia uh, for the people to people exchange for the 16 plus, plus one frameworks people to people exchange um, as the one of the uh, uh, coordinator of this conference I now I I stay here nearly two months to prepare this conference together with our colleagues, counterpart, Maris and Zans are especially for the strong support for uh, Director General Andres and uh, our Director General Huang Ping. I, I, here I know that it's not my duty to give some concluding remarks, but uh, here I seriously, from my bottom heart, I think that this today's event could become a very successful story. Uh, 
ever since I work, I never uh, managed so big, so successful, and uh, so representative conference. Thank you. Uh, here I turn to the topic on the people to people change. I think um, um, now the 16 plus one uh, framework uh, includes three pillars. One is the political uh, political cooperation. Second is the trade and the investment cooperation. The third is the people to people exchange. And now the third pillar has become more and more important. Why to say that? Because you know that. You know that through people to people exchange, we can get what the book could not include and provide the information, the very valuable information. Second is that any decision making um, must be implemented by person, by people to people's cooperation, people to people's coordination. Through this uh, division, I think that uh, um, we didn't uh, uh, pay less attention to the people to big change. It's really play a very important role. And also, I want to share uh, some experience as the one of the organizers of the conference, I mean the 16 plus one think tank network, that how we operate or implement some people to people exchange through this uh, uh, think tank network uh, in, uh, entrusted by our government. The first point is about the uh, try to provide a platform. Why to see that? We hope that in uh, in today's world, in current world, the platform has played a very important role. It can collect the ideas, uh, thinking from all levels, as all levels of people, to hammer uh, hammer out some joint uh, actions to make some concrete result. So. We like to play a role to uh, be the provider of the platform. It's our first experience. The second maybe is to hold on the inclusive and open spirits that uh, uh, I also found that today's conference we have invited all uh, many countries people uh, who are interested in this uh, event, uh, who are interested in, the, uh, interested in the 16 plus one uh, project. So this also very confirmed to our spirit, spirit to the inclusive and open uh, uh, method. Uh, maybe the last uh, uh, point is that uh, we hope that uh, we must give uh, full publicity to this event, that uh, in the media or in the information age, we must uh, let more people to know or realize what we have done is very, very important. It's very, very useful and is very, very public, very, very transparent in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. <laughs> you have still three minutes to go, so if you have any other <laughs> remarks you can still want to make. Um, now I turn to my uh, left side. Um, to Dr. Tatiana Kotya, Vice Rector of the Riga Stradinch University, and you have been the uh, uh, highest, uh, the most important person on the education in Latvia at one point as well. You, were, you are the former Minister of Education and, and Science of Latvia. You also have been a professor at the University of Latvia, and also, as I found, a researcher at the Liège University in Belgium. That was also probably a long time ago. But uh, in this case, could you please tell your thoughts on, 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 on how the educational system fits on all this? Thank you very much. Good afternoon, dear all promoters and enthusiasts of people-to-people -people engagement. I think it's a great time when this uh, forum takes place because nowadays we more often and louder hear about building walls and what, do we, what is doing our Institute of National Affairs, building bridges. Thank you very much for that. Uh, and I'd like to say that within this globalized world, actually, there has been an international trend toward increased engagement of, of the public into affairs and decisions of different settings from NGOs to policy bodies. And on one hand, engagement is comprehensive and inclusive. That's clear. But on the other, uh, what we all know, or the participants of this forum, that, uh, that uh, there was a short survey and which found out that uh, more than half of the representatives representative didn't know anything about 16 plus 1 cooperation and 
over two thirds didn't know that uh, this forum, which we consider, I mean, uh, on today and tomorrow, uh, the forum of governments of uh, CES and China, which we consider very important, even haven't heard about this. Uh, it means that the ultimate question, how to enable engagement, is of extreme importance. And summarizing the available information before this meeting, uh, I was pleasantly surprised that there is already a considerable amount of collabor collaboration examples. Referring to my personal experience, I should mention that I have visited China several times uh, in different capacities, both in the capacity of professor and also the capacity of Minister of Education and Science and Sports, including attendance of Beijing Olympic Games. And each time I had absolutely fabulous uh, experience, regardless of the fact that I do not speak Chinese and I'm not proficient in Chinese culture and uh, communication peculiarities. I have to say that this fabulous experience was due to very caring attitude and communication with young volunteers who did their best to comfort my, uh, my stay during the visit to, to China. And therefore, I'd like to state that the informal communication uh, with the volunteers was mutually beneficial as they helped me to acquaint better with China and its people, and on my behalf, off, I provoked their interest for Europe in general and Latvia in particular uh, because, believe me or not, I was the first person with whom they uh, spoke and stayed for several days in a row. So I'd, uh, thus, I'd like to infer that communication and participation are the major tools for people-to-people -people engagement. And nowadays, in the capacity of provost at Riga Stradinsch University, I'd like to share the experience of our institution, how we enable our students to strengthen skill, these communication skills. Namely, we organize uh, events which expand knowledge about countries and possibilities for young people in these countries. For instance, let me mention activities of our Confucius Center or uh, participation in China and CES Higher Education Institution Consortium or China culture promotions like Lantern Festival and, and, and the like are just only some examples of the wide range. Besides, Riga Stradinsch University offers Latvian language courses for representatives from China and vice versa, Chinese language for the locals. And this is the right place to mention that already a year at Beijing uh, International Studies University, uh, we implement bachelor study program of Latvian language and 20 students have already been enrolled. So it's important to stress that language proficiency, and as I before told, said already this, uh, enriches possibilities to obtain knowledge. And I dare to predict that if today's forum was held in Chinese and Latvian, without uh, this lingua franca, uh, 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 to, 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 my, to my mind, the atmosphere, the level of trust and mutual understanding would allow to discover more profoundly that there is more than what unites us and much less that divides us, especially, of course, in academia, in academia environment. Uh, so language is extremely is important, not mentioning the fact that linguistic expertise and accuracy may be crucial for productive cooperation. For example, interpretation of Latvia place names uh, uh, using Chinese language characters is of extreme importance because they may lead to the right direction or mislead if, if we don't use the right characters. So the second element for people-to-people -people engagement is definitely participation. Exchange programs, starting with the school exchange programs like, 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 AF, like AFS, to professional mobilities, including grants and scholarships. This is the right place to remind that between Latvia and China, we have signed the agreement on mutual recognition of higher education qualifications and degrees between Ministry of Education of Science Latvia and Ministry of Education of People's Republic of China on October 22, 2010, so six years ago. The agreement provides 
an excellent platform for young people to study and obtain EU-recognized qualifications and degrees. Expert Commission now is working on details, and uh, the, soon there will be a meeting for, you know, to specify further activities, but it's a great platform. And to my mind, also nowadays, online learning uh, abolishes bo borders and barriers. Availability of open access learning promotes interest to choose university outside home country. So our duty is, of course, to make information as available and as accessible as possible, and also to expand student teachers and researchers' mobility borders. Of course, another element of this people-to-people -people, uh, participation is involvement of volunteers, what I already mentioned, of different age and life experience into this wide range of 16 plus 1 activities. I hope that within these two, year, two days' stay in Latvia, uh, our uh, partners will have the uh, possibilities, a lot of contact with volunteers uh, who will help to understand the country they visit. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, in China, actively functions Latvian community association, which is called TALCA, which to my mind are eager to get involved into 16 plus 1 activities. So there is no doubt that this appropriate dissemination of positive outputs of people-to-people -people engagement serves to encourage to rise to the challenge which open and uh, open and globalized world brings to us. Mm -hmm. So and let me conclude <laughs> together that we are able to take on a number of current issues, reflect on these issues, and agree on the most appropriate solutions to provide conditions for people-to-people -people engagement, in particular in research and education across a broad front in Central and Eastern Europe and China, demonstrating that win-win solutions are possible and can be most productive. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Kocha. Um, let's move a little bit further and try to connect now to Hungary. Uh, Dr. Tamas Matura, assistant professor at the Corvinius University, uh, Corvinius University of Budapest, founder and president of the Central and Eastern European Center for Asian Studies in Hungary, research fellow also formerly as, uh, at, the, at the Hungarian Institute of National Affairs, and also advisor on China to the Minister of National Economy as an editor of the China Strategy of Hungary. So you're an expert on China. Should, should I continue? No, no, no that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, okay so uh, please. Thank Pleasure. you very much, Chair, and thank you very much for having me here today indeed. And I would like to say thank you for all of those who are still present in the auditorium because, you know, when it comes to the question of people-to-people -people contacts at other conferences, I always have the feeling that some people tend to leave. They don't understand the importance of people-to-people -people contacts between two uh, fantastic cultures, Central Europe and China. And I think these contacts are so important that uh, haven't you noticed in the morning in the first two sessions that when it comes to these big strategic level projects like Belgrade Budapest railway line other connectivity you know what the politicians love to talk about there are many concerns many doubts many questions with regard to the feasibility of these uh, and the future of these concepts and these projects and initiatives and meanwhile when it comes to people to people contacts uh, on the grassroots root level we have have to know that there are many, many tangible successes, tangible results. Let me tell you just one simple number. There are already 5,000 Chinese students studying in Central and Eastern European countries and 3,000 CE students studying in China. This is going to be a huge asset to our countries uh, in the upcoming years and decades. There was a question in the description of the panel whether people-to-people -people re relations will contribute to uh, the economic cooperation between the two sides. Obviously to a very, very high extent, but it takes time. By the time these students will get to the, to the peak of their career uh, on both sides, they will be business leaders, they will be political leaders, part of the elite. I think their contribution to the cooperation between our region and, and China will be tremendous. It's just a very indirect co connection, but we have to uh, pay attention to that. Um, at the same time, I'm an analyst, so of course I, I have to address some problems and some issues uh, to talk about uh, between the two sides. Uh, what I tend to mention every time that uh, we shouldn't forget that there is a very 
different mindset between the two sides. And no matter whether it comes to the 16 plus one cooperation or one belt cooperation, this very different mindset does matter. Um, I could say that usually we, would, we tend to say that uh, Western people tend to have an inductive, uh, sorry, a deductive mindset. So when we have an initiative, when we have a plan, usually there is a, a blueprint, a map, a roadmap, uh, something very detailed behind we, uh, we build upon. While on the other side, East Asian people tend to have uh, an inductive mindset. It means that there is an idea, a strategic level idea, usually embraced by the, by the highest levels of the leadership, like in the case of 16 plus one, or like in the case of one belt, one road, but there is no real roadmap behind because the East Asian mindset is more organic. It builds upon um, every step built upon uh, the next one. And it leads to very important uh, misunderstandings between the two sides. What we have learned from the 16, one, 16 plus one cooperation in the re recent years was that all the suspicion, especially in Western Europe, what we have already mentioned today, in Berlin, in Paris, in Brussels, first of, all, first of all, all the suspicions, all the allegations came from this very fact that everyone in the West thought that, okay, there should be a secret plan because we know nothing about the details of, of the 16 plus one. So it, there should be a secret plan. China tries to divide and rule Europe. We all know this, this kind of uh, discourse about the issue. There was no secret plan. China tries to work together with the Central and Eastern European countries to, to, to build the 16 plus one cooperation. And um, at least in the name of the Hungarian side, I, I would like to recommend to all Central European countries to, to work together with the Chinese. I've got the feeling that sometimes we are waiting for the Chinese side to tell us what to do. We should contribute to the 16 plus one. Last year I went to Berlin and I had a very interesting conversation uh, with local people over there, business leaders and other, other people, and they were complaining that, you know, the Chinese are coming to our city and they are asking us what to do with the, six, well, with the one belt, one road. And we tell to the Chinese that, come on, it's your idea. Tell us what to do. And even the Germans do not understand that it should be an organic cooperation between the two sides. There is another problem when it comes to um, mutual misunderstandings. Of course, Central European people have a lot of misunderstandings about China. I don't want to get into the details. We all know that. But there are some misunderstandings on the Chinese side as well. Uh, it's quite concerning when I hear um, high-level Chinese people talking about 16 plus one cooperation as a south-to-south -south cooperation. That's a very serious misunderstanding, and I would like to recommend to the Chinese side, I know those who are present in the, in the room, they know a lot about Central Europe, and, and they know how Central Europe is, and I would like to refer to Professor Chen Xin, who just said uh, recently that Central Europe is rich. Yes, we have to take it into account that every single member of the, every single European Union member of the 16 plus one countries is much more wealthy and developed than China when it comes to GDP per capita. It's not the optimal mindset to come to Central Europe and try to implement measures what China have used quite successfully, for example, in Africa. Uh, there is going to be a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of uh, failure based on that uh, mindset. And last and not least, I have some recommendations, actually three of them. Uh, those who know me, uh, they know that I have uh, I've been keeping uh, uh, recommending these things, but I will keep to do so until they come to existence. So, uh, the first one is what we have a huge asset on both sides, uh, and I, what I call the potential of little ambassadors. Uh, there are many countries around the world which use their students who are sent abroad based on different scholarships to promote their home country. The Americans do the same. When American students are sent, for example, based on different scholarships to, to Nordic countries, they are required to make presentation on their countries. We could do the same. Chinese students uh, studying in Central Europe and Central European students studying in China should be requested and required to make presentation on their home country. They could get to the very basic levels of the society at universities and 
actually to a level of the society where the elite of the future is under development, if I may say so. Uh, the second one, what we can learn from the European Union is a system of, uh, uh, of China chairs, something similar to the system of, of, of Jean Monnet chairs, what we have in the European Union. I know that there is a very extensive system of Confucius Institute all around the world, but uh, do you all respect uh, Confucius Institutes have their own limits? First of all, most of them, what I know, they only can reach, or usually can reach the people who are inherently interested in, in China or in the Chinese culture, but they can rare, rarely reach out to people who are maybe biased about China or have bad feelings about China. Professors at universities, at universities of economics, law, foreign policy, I don't know, military affairs, they can reach out to, to the next uh, uh, generation of leaders. And last but not least, you know, I'm a researcher, so I have to, to, to say something which is good to me. Uh, what we desperately need is, a, I think, is a joint research fund. This is something we can learn from the Visegrad countries. There is a Visegrad fund, uh, which is a foundation or a fund contributed uh, by all Visegrad member states, and therefore all member states researchers can apply to get some, some research support. I think it would be great to have something like that on either on the 16 plus level or maybe on the one belt, one road level. Mm -hmm. Because we need research funds and our countries sometimes, our own governments tend to be reluctant to, to, to so support us if the Chinese side um, promoted this idea, there would be no other option but to join this, this fund by Central European governments as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you very much. Um, now we go even more south. Uh, <laughs> Professor uh, Boyan Lalic, uh, head of the Department for Industrial Engineering and Management, Faculty of Technical Sciences, University of Novi Sad in Serbia. And uh, you have also been a founding member of the uh, International Institute for Mass Customization and Personalization in Munich in Germany. Is that right? Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Great. Um, please, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Since uh, you saw part of my background, it's uh, mostly when you are speaking of uh, initiatives people to people, I will speak uh, mostly about university cooperations because we truly believe, as my colleague said already, that uh, students are some kind of uh, little ambassadors of, of countries and many, many successful countries recognize that in, in the years before. And uh, I would like to present you since uh, my, my, my speech is uh, more or less like engineers are speaking with the, some, some diagrams and something like that. We have prepared a presentation, but I, I will try to describe one model that we developed after the meeting in Beijing. The meeting in Beijing, uh, third uh, meeting on education, 16 plus one, held two weeks ago. And uh, we, we found out the same that uh, we found out today uh, from the old speakers, the problem of uh, synergy. The problem of transparency can be solved somehow, and we propose the physically uh, existing of a platform, internet platform, where we can put all our initiatives. Why? Because in the in last 12 years, as uh, 16 plus 1 and Belt and Road Initiative is existing, there are so many things that are happening right now. Every day we are hearing something new about stipendiums, about scholarships, about uh, uh, cooperation agreements. I heard during this panel two or three new, thi new things and it's, it's uh, really tremendously raising the, the number of facts, number of possibilities. And I think it's time to solicit all those things, put them together and connect with some interconnect connection with the industry, with some other aspects of, of uh, our, our life. So that's something that uh, we would like to propose as a contribution from our side to, to 16 plus 1 in, in all these uh, uh, initiatives, actually to increase the visibility of all our uh, acti activities. That's something that we, we would like to, to last. And in Beijing, we discussed that with the representatives of uh, China Education Association for International Exchange. And we concluded that to be a part of the charter that is going to be uh, implemented, I think, very soon. So the idea is to, to uh, make our talks last continually, even without and uh, after we meet in physically in such a nice place like Riga today. It's, it's very nice, but we need to speak in, in, in between our, our meetings. So it's uh, something that uh, connects uh, 
three main pillars means education, then research, as my colleague mentioned, and industry and society transfer. Three pillars and uh, six uh, initiatives, six activities that are combining that. First one, uh, if uh, we can speak, it's uh, uh, different study programs, joint studies, studies in foreign countries, studies about language, culture, engineering, and so on. So that's something that is going on somehow, and we have a lot of students, as I, as I heard already. But what if we connect that with the fundings and with the scholarships just to match somebody to see, hey, I would like to study there. And there is a stipendium that, or scholarship that is covering the, the costs of this. So it would be great and maybe we'll be increase the number of those scholarships and so on. And next one is uh, actually third part of, of uh, this model is policies and legal framework. Uh, Provost mentioned the mutual agreement on recognition of degrees. Would be great to have that somewhere on one space where they can see that it's uh, recognized when they're studying in, in, in other country and so on. I'm speaking about network. I'm speaking about 16, actually 17 countries putting together their study programs, their scholarships, their uh, mutual agreements and so on. So that's, that's the third, third pillar. And, uh, Please remind me uh, two minutes <laughs> before the end of time. And uh, then joint projects, different projects. What does it mean, different projects? Let me uh, put my, yeah, joint projects. Uh, I heard today we are speaking about joint research centers, network of those centers with the different projects. First one, scientific projects, and publishing, of course, the results. The second one, industry projects. We have different companies that are present right now in different, different uh, countries of 16, and we would like to connect that because we recognized in Beijing that there is a problem of uh, knowing uh, many facts about the countries, about 16 countries from children from, from China. And if they see some companies that are present there, maybe they will come, they will follow that, and they will study uh, language or some engineering stuff and so on. And the third very important things, uh, thing is strategic structural studies, strategic studies that are feeding think tank, feeding with the facts about economy, about industry, about uh, development and growth, and that's something that's supposed to be visible, and that's something that will bring up the volume of cooperation, volume of uh, people exchange and, and, and everything. So uh, that's an uh, important part of, the, of, of this model. Uh, fifth one is industry. We, we truly believe that without putting companies that are connecting us, companies that are uh, building railroads, that are uh, building and uh, delivering all those projects, without them, its recognition is not so, so big. So interconnectivity between all those things is also very important, as well as visibility and continuous talks. And the last one, the last thing that uh, we think it's, it's uh, valuable to be a part of this, this uh, model is uh, something that we called meet the talents. Who are the talents? The talents are young people who are going to be think tank tomorrow. People who deserve the space from the early beginning in the initiative 16 plus one and one belt one road initiative. People who will, uh, young people, who will follow some, some ideas, some thoughts, because that's, that's something that uh, we are investing in tomorrow. We are all the time speaking that something will happen in a 10 years, in a 15 years, I don't know. It's, time is not so important when we know what we want to do. But the, the fact is that we have to educate people who are going to be in a 10 years, in a 15 years here, sitting here, speaking about a future and the present situation. I see, thank you very much. And I will conclude, I will conclude my speech. Since uh, I put so many things here, you know, it's, it's good when you're the last one, so you can, you can hear many, many interesting things. And uh, uh, so joining all these efforts, and uh, as I heard this morning from Professor Sprutz, and thank you for inviting me on this, this great event, mutual growth, mutual uh, growth in, in a sense that all uh, parts must be holistic. That's something I learned from the Chinese people, holistic view. We're not uh, nurturing one part or the other part. We need all body to be 
to, to grow in a, in, a, in a symmetrical way and to use our asymmetrical advantages. We are all today speaking about some advantages of Chinese part, a way of thinking, way of doing, delivering projects and so on, and European. And that's asymmetrical and that's nice. We have to use those asymmetrical advantages of both sides. So I will conclude with only one uh, quote uh, from the pre President Xi Jinping uh, that I saw and I read that he, he, he said about China and I would like to transfer this to all 16 countries. He said, to realize the Chinese dream, we must keep to the Chinese path, carrying forward the Chinese spirit and mobilize Chinese force. So he said that about China. I would like to transfer that to all six countries, 16 countries and China. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Boyan. Thank you. Um, I think we can uh, start with questions. If uh, the first question is, um, do you have any questions? Meaning, <laughs> 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 because I'm 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 in a, such a such a wonderful situation that I have China on the one side and Europe on the other side. I just want to use the opportunity for, to increase the connectivity between yeah. you. <laughs> so, uh, have you heard anything that you would like to ask uh, each other? Because there have been quite a lot of uh, proposals, uh, very good proposals that we have heard so far. Maybe you have some comments on 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 what was uh, Tamash uh, proposing regarding the uh, little ambassadors and, and, and China chairs and also uh, Visegrad Fund-like uh, entity which would be helping the uh, cooperation and people-to-people -people exchange. That could be a wise idea because uh, I could be granted with the, ac that's the added extra time. Just now we two were talking, while well, we were, sm were smoking, we were talking about the language solutions since we have, uh, let's see, 16 countries. When I was in Brussels, I've noticed, uh, except uh, English language, uh, 12 languages at that moment were, let's see, official languages. So the question is, how to solve the problem? Is that the right way that we press or ask our students, uh, vice versa, right, to study one nation's certain languages? My idea is that uh, surely the first main idea, the first main solution, that is 16 countries and China, we two sides uh, first need to find the common international style language. Sounds like uh, English, French, Spanish, whatever. Because businessmen, because my major is in international business. Businessmen, how could you let's say, ask them or ask them to wait, like this gentleman mentioned. After 10 years, five years, we have got the let's say, language experts. And then that, at that moment, we still let's say, need to wait for a long way. Furthermore, it is not fair, I mean, for a student, graduate or master student, to push them to study a, a very, I'm not uh, seeing a kind of language discrimination, but I have to say language has a certain area, right? For example, my, I've pressed my master student to study three years uh, about a certain country's uh, that's language. I must add another that's the main language, and plus the, the supported language like English as a main route, and then add the Romania language or Polish language. So my idea is that first, the, the two wheels, just like a bike. The, the first, uh, the front wheel, that is for the public, just to try to find the, that's the public international style language and create the communicating channel. The second wheel, that is uh, designed for some special ads or professors. Uh, if they want, want to have the further or deeper communicating, they must touch this nation's uh, language like uh, Romania language or like Chinese language. So that is my that's a suggestion. I mean, yeah. it's efficient. Yeah. yeah, I have uh, one heard the Thomas Madudalit suggestion for maybe several times on <laughs> found the collaboration scholars, uh, something like a Ramoni uh, Char suggestion. I know that uh, uh, I will say some point that first, uh, you know that we have established some funds until now, many. You cannot see one or two, you have many funds. 
even uh, under the framework of the China European Cooperation and also China Central East European Cooperation, we have uh, two different kinds of fund. So uh, maybe I think I have invite, once you invite you to join one of the funds to write some papers. Uh, so I think the fund cooperation is a very useful tool to promote people to people exchange. Uh, I remember the year, uh, last year I once visited the, the headquarters of a Visegrad fund and uh, uh, talk about the cooperation possibility between uh, Chinese government and the, and the Visegrad uh, group. But after I return, I discuss this, I find there are some technical issue to be solved. So I hope that maybe in the future we can find the synergy between two <laughs> different uh, uh, research funds. Uh, second, you know the, the res, uh, research Germany pro, uh, professors, Germany chairs. Uh, but now you, in China, we have different chairs, uh, professors. Even there are some foreign professors who hold the position in some very famous university. I remember there is an American professor now once the dean of the faculty in Shandong University. He is also a, a researcher from political studies. So I think, but why now there are very difficult, it is difficult to establish such a, a professor position in Central and East European studies. This is, uh, the reason is that in China, the studies on Central and East European uh, is not a good academic foundation. And uh, you know that we are American studied or European studied, maybe there are relatively better uh, foundation for that. Uh, so uh, this is my, uh, my <laughs> understanding of your proposal. Mm -hmm. But maybe you know that it's a good start to hammer out some possibility to cooperation, such as our, our president said, we all establish some entity or research center in Central and East European countries. I think maybe it's a good try to promote it the cooperation with each other. Chairman, let me add the, something about the funds, because mm -hmm. I find out that my colleagues are very interested about this. There you can find some booklets. I can, I'm responsible to tell you one thing. Our central government has even established the special scholarship support to the students from CEC. No number limited, limitation. I can promise you right now, if you have students, okay, let's go through a, they, they, let's help them to go through the official application to get the fund, foundation from our central government, that is one. Not only for the language. My university offers the specialities like international business, like accounting, because I come from the, uh, that's the Herbert University of Economics and Business. For this, the local government has established an institute. Another thing that is, uh, we could capitalize the funding, that is Confucius Institute. Okay, I've got one. The thing is that uh, we just could not have, uh, could not find the platform to change, uh, that's it, to exchange our information. You have got the students, okay? Come to my university. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Professor Cheng. Uh, I like the very position that Latvian Institute of National Affairs is actually bridging. <laughs> Do you have any, any yeah, responses? Two, uh, we two, hope two, that you all have responses to this. Two, three sentences. Uh, I'm not concerned of the students. They can go to China and they, they can find yes. their way, of course. There are a lot of scholarships. When it comes to the funds, the last time I checked, uh, only Chinese institutions and Chinese entities were entitled to, to, to ask, for fund, uh, ask for financial support there, and they were entitled to invite Central Europe European uh, partners, but Central European institutions on their own, there is no funds to, to apply to. So there is, it, I think it's, a, it's a, a major difference. And when I was talking about the China chairs, uh, I know that would be very hard to find Chinese professors to be a Central European chair in China. But I think it would be more, more than easy to find Central European professors to be a China chair, because we have to learn a lot about China here in Central Europe. And for, let me repeat myself, mostly at university universities of economics, law, politics, public administration. So it's important to learn about the culture as well, but it's even it's at least as the same important to, to teach uh, the new elite about China. Okay, do you, Dr. Kocha or uh, Boyan, do you have anything to add? Yes, I have. Yes? Okay, well then. Okay. <laughs> Ladies first. No, I just think that uh, the, the, one of the greatest possibilities is just to intensify the exchange 
and the earlier the better. But it is not only the exchange that uh, students go to a particular study program. I think that we much more have to organize uh, their contacts when they stay in the country. They're not only studying, but they have connections, I don't know, with the families, with the industry, with really networks, so that when they uh, when, when, when they come to, to, to back to, 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 to their country, they really can offer uh, several possibilities, not only for themselves, but for the entity who sent them there and maybe even broader context. Mm -hmm. I think this is, but still language, to my mind, language is import, important anyway. And, and young people, they are eager to learn. There is no problem for them with learning languages and it doesn't take 10 years. I think it, it, may, <laughs> it may go much, much, uh, much, much uh, quicker. And I think one resource, uh, uh, for, for, for CS countries is that people who, for one or other reason, live already in China. I think we, we, we are not aware of all of, all, of, all of them, that they also can be great ambassadors for, 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 the, for, the, for, the context, for, for the context. Yeah, I would like to ask one ambassador to, to stand up. <laughs> uh, our colleague, Nicola Zivlak, he graduated in Novi Sad and got PhD at Donghua University in China, in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And now he is a professor there and he has some license, special license to, to be professor in China as a foreigner. It's, it's something, something important and I can say he's, a, he's a, actually a great ambassador and thanks to him we are sitting here. And of course, uh, speaking about uh, scholarships uh, given uh, by the country, by the state, we're using that, I think. It's uh, Donghua University is uh, uh, established connection with the, with the state stipendium system, and we have, let's say, five to seven students every semester there. So we're using that. As well as I learned in 2011 when I was in, in China for one month on, on some, some uh, additional studies, I, I recognized that uh, when I was in some Western countries, usually when you go for a summer school or something, you're uh, listening about a specific topic from science or business, industry, and so on. But in China, we started with the culture, then history, and uh, a bit about religion, and then education. Then is uh, that part. So every time when we are establishing and we are doing for uh, four years now, winter academy and summer school, we are starting with those parts as a holistic, as I said, holistic approach to the story. Speaking about European culture, speaking about our Balkan countries and our culture, speaking about history, and then speaking about the specific topic from, from the, the field of engineering, for example, computer science, project management, and so on. So that's something that must not be uh, separating in the, in the, in the connection. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Boyan, very much. And I, uh, I really enjoyed that you already started involving the audience in, in, in all this uh, discussion. So in this case, I would actually like to uh, hear your thoughts. Uh, we all would like to hear your thoughts and your questions on the people-to-people uh, -people connectivity. Uh, I'm going to remind those of us uh, who are seeing us from the digital version or, or in, in, in pictures, uh, then in that case, uh, please write your uh, questions to, uh, to on, on Twitter, and you can also do it in Latvian, because of course we can do the translation as well if somebody is interested. Uh, so please, if you could raise your hands and uh, state your affiliations, and most importantly, the questions. Yes, please, we have one at the end. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, first, I'm very honored to be here and to listen to you, uh, such splendid lectures. And I'm very interested in Professor uh, Cheng Jian's uh, topic because I'm also a teacher from Beijing Foreign Studies University. And uh, uh, we are a traditional language university which run almost uh, 78 language programs. And the Latvian program is one of them. And I'm here. Uh, to Latvian, uh, actually I'm, I'm study uh, Latvian language and culture and I will um, become the language the Chinese teacher in our country. And so I'm really very interested in this topic. Uh, for me, I think language is really, really very important. Uh, e even in these days, uh, our uh, society uh, development developed so fast and uh, long, uh, if we just focus on the language and culture uh, and literature, maybe it is not uh, uh, enough. But I still think uh, we need some expertise, uh, expert 
uh, in the language area. Because, uh, for example, uh, a very uh, a, a very simple example, uh, it is in Chinese we call the call the uh, tea table. We call it the uh, uh, coffee top. Uh, coffee table, we call it a tea table. But in Latvian, we call it a, a, journal, a journal table. So I think it is very interesting. If you don't understand the language, then maybe you cannot uh, get the culture point. So uh, for me, I uh, partly agree with Professor Chen Jian because not every student will be interested just in language. But I think language is still very important. We need, we need uh, uh, direct some students who have li even little interest in the language to become the expert. So here I also want to uh, 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 listen to um, Professor Guoqie's opinion about this uh, question. So what, do, uh, what is your expectation of your student of the language program? So do you think they uh, can reach the local uh, native speaker uh, level or just uh, uh, through the intermediate uh, uh, language, uh, mostly English, to understand the language, uh, the culture? Is it enough? So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are one, one comment towards you and there's a question towards you. But uh, do we have any other? Yes, please. There's another question. Uh, thank you very much. I want to follow uh, this the, the research fund topic. Uh, so, sorry, uh, could you state your name? Uh, Justin and, and Astrolik, Polish Institute of International Affairs. So I would like to ask a question to Liu Zhokui. If you could have some um, information about the current situation of the research fund and the 16 plus 1 framework, because as, as uh, Thomas has mentioned, um, we see the problem with the application to this fund because we as a, for, for example, Polish Institute of International Affairs, we could not apply for it as a one institute. We should, uh, even we could not find a Chinese partner. Should, Chinese partner should find us and then apply, uh, and apply for, for some projects. So I'd like to ask you if still the, same, the, the regulation is as it was two or three years before, or maybe you have already reformed the, the fund, or if you have any, any plans to reform and to, to, to maybe to, to have this fund that would be open for, for, for example, for um, institutes for 16 countries. Thank you. Do I s yes, 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 we have normal. Thank you. Norman Grosten, Latvian Institute for uh, Future Research. Uh, I think we, everybody here, we were happy to hear that uh, approximately 5,000 um, Chinese students are already uh, studying in Central and Eastern Europe. And uh, uh, my uh, question uh, will be spe more specifically directed to uh, Dr. Tatiana Kuoke, uh, because uh, I'm interested how uh, many uh, Chinese students uh, do you have at uh, your university? And uh, probably, what is your ambition? Um, uh, which uh, part out of 5,000 are you going to attract to Riga? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, OK, let's be Yes, please. The microphone. Please use the microphone. It's necessary also for the streaming purposes. Okay. Uh, reintroduce myself. My name is Cao Hui, and uh, I come from the CAS, the Institute of European Studies. I think Professor Cheng Jie made a very good uh, point about the language. Language, of course, is important. I'm not agree with you, but uh, I would say on the, on the, on the point of uh, think about if the UK exists, the, the EU, and uh, the English language would not be the official language and uh, probably we have to learn the other European language for backup. Um, uh, the language does, does matter, isn't it? Um, I also would like to uh, comment on the language because, uh, and also the people-to-people -people contact. I am the beneficial of the people-to-people -people contact. I studied in Italy for three, three, three years actually. Um, before that, everybody said, well, it would be very dangerous if you studied in East Sicily. I stayed in there, and I wouldn't say 
uh, there is a nothing more safer place than Sicily in Catania. So I, I, I would like to, to say if there is no scholarship offered to me for a study in Italian university, if, if there is a no life experiences living in Italy, living in Sicily, a very, very dangerous city, which I, will, I perceived before. But uh, I would say, well, if you don't know the place, if you think about that, why not you just go stay there for a while? If you don't trust China, why don't you stay in China for at least a week? And uh, I think probably the, the, the precondition to get to know each other is to be there and uh, to know the language. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, we have a question, please. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I would just like to say that uh, I believe that this uh, panel is extremely important. I think, I think the time is definitely not enough to discuss this, uh, these important issues. Um, I would like to say I live in China uh, for 10 years, being someone from these uh, 16 uh, countries. And um, when I came to China, uh, I was the, the first one uh, ever from Europe to, to do graduate studies at our school. After me, there was no one uh, else uh, coming. So, so I think it's a, it's a very complicated, a complex uh, context uh, in between these 16 countries in China. And um, I think that uh, this people-to-people -people connection is, is extremely uh, important. Uh, we have to work on it. Uh, from our personal experience, we did uh, several projects, but only because uh, we boost uh, that energy, we managed to attract people. Otherwise, that doesn't come automatically, because China has 2,300 universities. Uh, people don't recognize them. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. Uh, the, other, the other way around, Chinese students, uh, recognize a uh, few European countries as being the best uh, places uh, for their development. Uh, regulations are very complicated. Uh, for me, being someone uh, living in China, uh, it's extremely complicated uh, to, to move around. Even after 10 years, uh, so many things uh, are, are complex. Uh, visa regulations, uh, uh, research funds to access, as, as Mr. Uh, Tamar said, you always have to have a Chinese colleague to actually apply, and uh, the other way around is also languages and stuff. So I think that we should really uh, work on this and uh, to make people uh, meet. Uh, very simple example, uh, we have those scholarships that uh, Professor uh, Cheng mentioned, always more than uh, people apply. And uh, then we decided uh, three, four years ago to, to make some project called uh, Winter Academy. When uh, we come from China, me and my colleagues from, from our school, we work with students for three weeks. We choose 50 students. After that, immediately 10 of them uh, want to apply, uh, and they do apply and, and eventually go to China. The same, but someone has to do it. For, for example, uh, that personally cost me uh, three, four weeks uh, to stay and to do it. And uh, if there is no one, uh, and very often there is no one to do it, then some, some things uh, never happen. Okay, thank you. Um, before, yes, before we give the panel the possibility to respond to so many, so many very important and interesting questions, please. Uh, thank you. <coughs> Actually, it's not a question, just a comment. Uh, uh, I do think that people-to-people -people exchange is the most important uh, uh, pillar, maybe in our uh, sitting plus one cooperation. And uh, um, the, um, I think, uh, frankly speaking, China is not uh, good at uh, uh, public diplomacy. That is why I think uh, uh, we should do more efforts to the efficient and positive people-to-people -people exchanges. And this is not should be only a one-way communication. It should be the two-way communication. That means also our uh, friends in uh, sitting countries should help China to uh, uh, develop a more uh, mature and a more uh, positive people-to-people -people exchange, uh, public, uh, public uh, diplomacy. i just give you a very vivid example. Uh, I arrived uh, here uh, last night, and I noticed that uh, the Chinese side, I think maybe in order to uh, raise a more friendly atmosphere uh, for the uh, tomorrow's meeting, so they uh, rent, uh, to, uh, rent some um, advertising uh, board uh, to do some publicities. And one is, uh, I noticed that was in the airport. Another one is on my way here. And I noticed that in this uh, uh, 
advertising board, uh, there are pictures of China. One is the soldiers uh, raising the, uh, the national flags. Another one is the Tiananmen building uh, in all this red color. I think they are quite significant. They have very special meaning to Chinese people, but I don't think uh, European friends, uh, European uh, young people, they will have the similar uh, feelings uh, like Chinese people. So I, I can see the difference between the people's mind, people's way to thinking, uh, of thinking. So I think uh, our uh, uh, people, our friend in Central and Eastern European countries should help China to, uh, to um, think in their way, think in their mind to make the Chinese image more positive, more friendly. Uh, and uh, so I think this is a major task for our people-to-people -people cooperation. So that okay. is my point. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, we have one question, and if, if there are any others waiting, no, if no, then the last question, and then we're going to turn to the panel. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, I have no question, but uh, Prof. I want a very short comment. Uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, in previous session, I showed our latest uh, research product on the evaluation of the China 16 uh, countries. On the bilateral level, generally speaking, the people-to-people -people exchange is as important as the investment relations. So we cannot ne neglect it. Neglect such kind of importance of uh, the people's people exchanges. This my okay. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you very much. We have a long list of questions uh, to you and to you, and uh, I'm going to still add one more. <laughs> uh, I'm going to add one more because uh, Tamash, you were at one point saying that uh, one of the specifics of the cooperation between uh, between um, China and the Central and Eastern uh, European countries is that, uh, well, we are economically maybe a bit, a bit uh, more well off than the, than the Chinese South. But um, in this case, taking this as the, as the very beginning in the very first statement, the question is, if we look at how much uh, the tourist interaction, how much people-to-people -people interaction is taking place, it's not that so many of uh, people from Central and Eastern country, uh, European countries can actually, well, afford even going to China. So in this case, there is a question, is and how to make China as attractive for people to actually for them to start saving money and more intensively going, uh, going and seeing uh, China itself as tourists and also as, as, as students and scholars. So uh, now I hope there are questions for everybody. And uh, if I may, then in this case, let's, let's start with Professor uh, Cheng once again. Okay. Could you please respond? Actually, the questions. Uh are those items uh, I needed to explain in my presentation, but because of the time limitation, I crossed out. Thanks God, I've got the time back again. So two main questions. The first one, it refers to the language. <laughs> we are talking about the subject that people to people, face to face, or people to people's uh, uh, exchange, uh, that's the communicating, right? So the first thing that is very, which is very important here, that is about the language. I'm not saying that language is not important. Actually, I am stressing, I've been stressing language's importance. The thing is that how to take care of the importance? We have many countries. We have uh, different demands from the different group of people to language, for example, for our, let's see, young professor, and uh, for you, language, you, you guys need to, let's see, touch Latvia language deeper and deeper. Because you are a special group of people, right? Your demand for the language is for with the culture demands and the research demands, right? But think about my picture, 16 plus one, has got a cap, but how about the arms? How about the bodies? How about the feet? So my major is in international business. How about international business? Man, do we need to, that's it, to send all of them to go to China to study the Chinese language? I'm afraid uh, 
spending four years or five years, uh, that's still not enough because Chinese, Chinese is another language system. It's not so simple. So vice versa, the same. So my idea is that uh, for the special group of people, the pioneers or the experts or specialities, uh, they, they are the first wheel of the bike. They dip, they dig, 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 dig to touch the culture itself. But for the public, uh, common guys, especially business uh, guys, what they need to know, they just uh, that's the, use the interpreter, right? Use you as the interpreter and uh, to do the business. I'm anxious uh, looking for these kind of results. So that's something about the language. And of course, with, with the support of the local that's the language. Another thing is more important than language itself. From my perspective, language is nothing. Language is just a series of signals, right? I used to tell my students, you go back to, your, to tell your dad and mom, you have changed your dad and mom's title. Today, I name my mom as dad and dad as mom. It's okay. This experiment's case says language is not a kind of scientific thing. Of course, to some, that's the language experts, so they will have the argument with me because my major is not in language itself, right? What I want to stress is that language is a very important carrier of culture. So about the businessman's behavior, they also need to recognize the different culture. What is the proper process for the proper communicating? First, recognize the differences. No, first, beware of the cultural differences. Second step, that is, recognize the differences. And third thing is that to contain and to show your respect to people from the different culture, different countries, right? But the problem here is that we have 16 countries plus other countries. Now today, you just take me as an example. You see, Professor Jerry, what is your culture? First of all, the impression, you must say, you are keeping the Chinese citizenship. So your culture must be the Chinese culture back, but actually you are wrong. Because I have got the Dutch culture background plus states culture background and UK culture background. I could simply ask my master students to name me just as simply as Jerry. But in Chinese culture, that is forbidden. You must name me Professor Jerry and stand in to talk to me before you all start to talk. There we have the second point, that is how to recognize different culture. I have borrowed Hofstad, that's the story, that's the theories from West European countries. And now is the time for me to return Hofstad theory, cultural dimension six in that dimensions to East European people. That's my answer. Yeah, I've always got a kind of pressure from this chairman. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, uh, if I may, Professor Jerry. Uh, we turn to Dr. Leo, please. Yeah, yeah I would just save time. I, I will only respond to Yutina's question on the how to apply for the China CE research fund. I think most of the Central and the East European scholars are very, very interested in this research fund. Uh, I know that this research fund is proposed, was proposed by our Premier Wen Jiabao in 2012 uh, as the 12 measures of, uh, to promote the China CE cooperation. Each year we will offer 2 million RMB to finance the research activities uh, between uh, China and the CE scholars. And uh, I think for your question, you, um, you, you had better to ask directly to our media voice first. But uh, for uh, better promote implement this pro program, I also ask our ministry for affairs that uh, why not uh, let the Central and the East European scholars apply directly to this program? And uh, maybe I can give you the reference, the, re the response that uh, you know that uh, this program is not a government to government program. It's our Ministry for Affairs uh, apply the finance from our Ministry of fin uh, Ministry of Finance. So it's only a minister level program, which means that if we grant this fund to the foreigner for the CE scholars, this means that some financial transfer from one government to another government. 
this, this is really prohibited by our regulation. So this is the reason that why for the program, you must have a leading uh, app application institution from China, but not from Central and Eastern country. So I don't know whether I make a clear explanation to your question. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Lu. Uh, Dr. Kotya, your final remarks. First of all, I'd like to thank a young lady who is studying Latvian language uh, here in Latvia from China, and uh, most probably I could answer you, I could give you the answer in Latvian, but uh, uh, regardless, the, the other audience are still stick to English. I think that uh, actually the question of language is not only the question of uh, pronouncing the words. The question of language is actually the way to develop sense of belonging to the community which you would like to be interested in. And this is actually the major factor for developing cooperation. Otherwise, it will not work. And therefore, those who have this privilege to know the language, they definitely can make deeper roots in the community or society or country which, which they are interested in. But I think that very important is the, uh, to provide adequate materials from which you learn the language. And I think this is still the question for maybe, maybe lingua franca English, they, they have best materials, but still I think we all have to learn mm, how to make the materials which really help you to learn the language alive, which people speak, which researchers speak, that you can in, a, in the best, uh, best level speak both to your ad research advisor and to the bus driver, sorry for these, com for these comparisons. Then you really can learn the language. And I think that besides the materials, of course it is very important uh, direct contacts. And therefore all kinds of forms like summer schools, like contacts, uh, I don't know, um, hosting in a family or which enriches your, your contact, this is very, very, very imp important. Because knowing the language, uh, I think it also can break the stereotypes. Because uh, Thomas spoke very, uh, uh, very well on these minds and differences, on these stereotypes which the, the colleague from the audience uh, uh, t told us. I think that the, the acquisition of language helps helps to overcome these, the, the, these barriers. So thank you once again for learning, learning Latvian and you will be excellent ambassador in, at least in both countries, but maybe even, even more. As to Riga Stradinch University uh, 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 ambitions, actually Riga Stradinch University already now has over oh, almost 25% of, of students are foreign students, uh, international students. And uh, the majority of students come from EU countries like Germany and Scandinavia. Uh, but as to, as to China, uh, if you ask me as a provost, uh, I think that uh, we would be very interested to, to, to have Chinese students and you know the reason why, that they really study and work hard. And that is perfect example for other students because sometimes in Central and Eastern Europe, uh, our students, uh, try to uh, uh, reach the diploma with different, uh, not, not with so, so, so hard studying. Therefore, therefore we, we really uh, uh, like, like them to have, but in order to um, really uh, get more students, there are a lot of, so to say, uh, uh, social questions and conditions to, di to, to discuss, because living expenses and things like that are, of course, which, which not only university can solve, this can be, this should be solved on, so to say, governmental level. So thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm sorry for being that strict, but uh, please keep, keep, keep to 1.15 one, 1. minutes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> counting. Uh, regarding the language issue, um, there have been some recent articles and, and uh, analysis about the most endangered uh, jobs which are going to disappear in the upcoming few years and decades because of automatization. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, translators, interpreters are on the top of the list because just think about what uh, Google Translate has achieved in the last decade. So there are already some technological advancements that you're going to have some small plug to be plugged 
plugged into your ear and it will translate everything. Of course, it won't translate literature, but you can get along with that. Uh, with regard to the fund, yes, exactly those burdens you just mentioned are the reason why I try to uh, push this idea forward to ask the central European governments to add another 2 million RMB a year, make a joint fund, and then everyone can apply. So I'm not, uh, uh, the problem is on the, on the European side, and China has the power to push the European government to uh, contribute to the research fund. And the last but not least, which regarding the tourists and, and the wealthiness, when I said that uh, Central European countries are, or the cooperation between China and the Central European countries is not like South-South cooperation because Central European countries are much more wealthy, that's an important point to make and keep it in mind when Chinese uh, businessmen try to invest into our region. That they have to apply, they have to learn some other tools and means how to work and how to get along with, with uh, the local people and local or, you know, uh, EU rules and regulations and law and, and uh, the business environment at all. Uh, while to send more Central European tourists to, to China, yeah, in this regard, we are poor. Uh, China is far away, and those in Central Europe who have the money, they, they would like to first to see Paris, London, Madrid, etc. But I think, I think even Central European tourists' number flying to China is on the rise. More and more direct flights are, are uh, open between the two, two, two sides, so I'm, I'm optimistic to keep in with this regard. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Matura. Boyan. Oh, I'll be very short. Uh, there is a very good saying says, if there is good will, there is the way. So I'm sure that we are going to find a way. And uh, definitely there is no um, case that whole population is speaking somebody else's language. So we need representatives. We need somebody that is uh, uh, learning Latvian and then speaking to other people. I know that Nikola is uh, very good in Chinese, so when he's speaking with the Chinese partners, it's completely different when, they are, when I'm speaking in English. So it's something that, but we have to obey the situation. So it's something that if we raise the visibility, if we raise the expressions, put somewhere where somebody can collect that, for example, this is all recorded, yeah? And it's live streamed. Maybe it's recorded and it can be put somewhere and somebody can listen to that. Somebody who is not so great in English can do that twice or something like that. <laughs> we have to find a place where to put all intentions, all ideas, and then we, we can do that. And I think there is a way, there is a technology that can support that. And that's something that we can, we can, uh, we can use in, in, in a great way. Thank you. You were... Very short. <laughs> I don't want to see so that my, and that, that was my main task <laughs> today, just, to, just, just to keep you short. And then as, as, as an unfortunate situation isn't this uh, with, the, with the very fact that we have to be communicating and we have to be talking and we have to be negotiating. And uh, one of the things which I was, I was listening and I was a bit um, worried about is that uh, and not only me, apparently everybody is a bit worried about the language differences and then language plays a very big role in today's discussion. It's about language. One side is afraid of other side's language and it's not only from Latvians or, or, or Hungarians or Serbians being afraid of the uh, uh, Chinese language, it's also vice versa. And we have very good examples of, of, of people who actually have mastered uh, the, the, the both of the languages and you are the ones who are pushing the people-to-people uh, -people communication even more. And you are doing it as, as, as much as these things are doing nowadays that you can type in and translate everything instantly. Um, anyhow, uh, we are running out of time. It was a great panel. Uh, please join me in the applause uh, to them. Thank you.